Hello, my name is Tim Clark, founder of Corazon Oilfield Services. Welcome to Coring 101, Episode 3, Coring Hardware. This week, I'm going to quickly run through the basic coring hardware to give you a better idea of the parts that make up a coring BHA. In this episode, I'm only going to talk to you about the basic rotary system. I will cover other systems in future episodes, including the different specialised systems such as orientated and sponge coring. As mentioned in episode 1, a rotary coring BHA is made up of two basic sets of parts, an inner and an outer core barrel. The outer core barrel is made up of the core head, outer barrel sections, which in turn are composed of stabilizers and tubular subs, and the top head. The inner barrel is made up of the shoe, inner barrel liners, and the gyro head, also known as the swivel assembly. First, I will look at the outer core barrel. At the very bottom of the string, as with any drilling assembly, is the bit, or in this case, the core head. The core head is a specialized drill bit without a center. This means as the hole is made, a slender rock is left intact. In modern coring, fixed cutter bits are used for core heads, and blade count, spiraling severity, cutting structure, profile, and internal design can be customized accordingly to help EMP companies optimize ROP while maintaining core quality. When choosing the core head, factors such as lithology, formation hardness, abrasiveness, and consolidation should be taken into account. A coring BHA is usually a very stiff assembly that is frequently stabilized, usually every 30 feet, with stabilizers only slightly under gauge, typically 1 32nd of an inch. The first stabilizer in the BHA is the near bit stabilizer, right above the core head. The core barrel is frequently stabilized to maintain core quality by minimizing lateral movement or bending that may damage the core and negatively impact the quality of the core data. The top head is at the top of the coring BHA and serves two purposes. It contains a swivel assembly, which I'll talk about in a minute, but also functions as a crossover between the coring BHA and the rest of the drill string. The inner barrel is also composed of three major parts. The shoe, the inner barrels, also called liners, and the swivel assembly, or gyro head. The shoe is composed of three main parts, the upper and lower shoe, and the core catcher. The shoe sits inside the core head itself and guides the inner barrel over the core. It also contains a core catcher, which secures the core inside the core barrel during trip out. The catcher is a tapered split ring with a rough interior. The catcher uses the force of gravity to engage and create a diameter restriction to hold the core in place. Above the shoe are the inner barrels or liners. In modern coring, the inner barrel and liners are generally composed of aluminium, though fiberglass ones are still used. These materials are used due to low friction coefficient, which helps prevent jamming, which will be discussed in a later episode. Depending on the coring company, there are a number of styles of liners, which depend on the application. The main styles are half moon liners, which allow for easy access to the core at the well site, vented aluminium liners to release pressure from the core during trip out, and fluted liners, which also allow pressure to escape from the core. Pros and cons of the different liners need to be taken into account when planning a coring operation. At the top of the inner barrel is the swivel assembly or gyro head. This serves a dual function. Firstly, to allow the inner barrel to remain stationary while the outer barrel rotates, and secondly, to divert the flow of mud when coring starts from through the inner barrel to through the annulus between the outer and inner barrels. That was a quick introduction to basic coring hardware. In the next episode, we're going to have a quick look at reservoir simulation, and after that we'll come back to have a look at the more specialised coring hardware.